In this lesson, you will learn about the review of biosimilars in Japan. In the guideline, a biosimilar is defined as a biotechnological drug product developed to be comparable in regard to quality, safety and efficacy to an already approved biotechnology-derived product, originator or reference product. Biosimilars need not be identical to an original product, as are generic drugs. This is because the structural complexity and heterogeneity associated with post-translational modifications make it difficult for it to be identical to the original products. Therefore, it is necessary to demonstrate comparability, meaning high similarity, between biosimilar and originator product. This slide presents the approval status of biosimilars in Japan. In April 2009, important notifications and guidelines on biosimilars were issued. Soon after that, a somatropin biosimilar was approved. Since then, the number of approved products has gradually increased and 35 biosimilar products were approved from 2009 to 2023. The approved biosimilars are classified into six categories based on protein function and structure, as shown here. Monoclonal antibody, hormone, erythropoietin, cycotene, fusion protein and enzyme. Antibodies now make up more than half of newly developed biosimilars. This slide outlines the data required for approval applications for innovator products and those required for biosimilars. Verification of quality characteristics and evaluation of efficacy and safety in non-clinical and clinical studies are required for innovator products. On the other hand, comparison with the innovator product is the focus of a biosimilar. Comparability of a biosimilar with an originator biological product is demonstrated when their quality attributes are highly similar and that any differences in the quality attributes have no adverse impact upon safety or efficacy. The requirements and scope for non-clinical and clinical study data to submit for a biosimilar depend on the extent to which comparability has been established by evaluation of the quality attributes. A typical manufacturing method of biological products is shown in this figure. A gene transfected cell clone is stored as cell banks, and the culture scale is expanded from a cell bank to a productive bioreactor. The culture supernatant is collected and purified by column chromatography. In addition, low pH treatment and removal by filtration for viruses are performed. Biosimilars are produced in the same way as biological products containing new active ingredients. So, it is necessary for a biosimilar product to independently develop a manufacturing process characterize quality attributes, design formulations, and establish a quality control strategy. Information on the quality attributes of originator biologics can help for the development of biosimilars, but it is not necessary to have the same manufacturing method or specification as that of originator products. This slide explains key points of developing the biosimilar manufacturing process and quality characterization. The first point is host cell lines. It is preferable to use the same host cell line as the originator biological product because it affects post-translational modifications such as sugar chains and host cell proteins. Secondly, for drug formulation, the routes of administration of the originator product and biosimilar must be the same. 
However, different dosage forms and different formulations can be used. Thirdly, specifications for biosimilars should be set based on the results of characterization or lot analysis. It does not need to be identical to the specifications for the originator product. The new test procedures can be used for biosimilars if the change in the test procedures is justified due to differences in test principles and correlation of data. And then, fourthly, is storage and shelf life. Storage conditions and shelf life must be established based on the stability data of biosimilar products and long-term storage test data are required. A shelf life of a biosimilar is determined based on the results of long-term storage under actual storage conditions, based on the ICH Q5C guidelines, the same as other biological products. This slide shows an example of quality comparative studies conducted with biosimilar monoclonal antibody drugs. As molecular structures and physiochemical properties, amino acid sequences, translation modifications, N and C terminal amino acids, and higher order structures are evaluated. Biological activities include assays to assess antigen binding activity, neutralization assays to inhibit the action of antigenic proteins, binding affinity to FC gamma, receptors expressed on immune cells and C1Q, antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity, ADCC activity, and complement-dependent cytotoxicity, CDC activity. In addition, the percentage of aggregates and truncated forms is evaluated for the generation and removal of product-related impurities. To determine the degree of similarity among quality attributes, it is necessary to compare them using multiple batches of the drug substance or drug product. If any differences are observed in the comparative study, it is also necessary to consider the effect of the differences on efficacy and safety. Non-clinical studies for biosimilars are conducted to evaluate the pharmacological comparability and evaluate the safety until clinical trials are conducted. If comparative in vitro bioactivity, the receptor binding activity test and cell-based test is used as quality comparative studies, it may be applicable as a non-clinical pharmacology study. In vivo pharmacological or pharmacokinetic studies may be needed only where in vitro bioactivity is not correlated with clinical pharmacokinetics or efficacy. For example, erythropoietin. In addition, if the results of a comparative study of quality and pharmacology studies show a high similarity with the originator product and it is possible to fully explain that there are no safety concerns in conducting clinical studies, non-clinical safety studies may be admitted. Comparisons of efficacy and safety are required through clinical trials, since the comparability cannot only be demonstrated based on data regarding quality attributes and the results of non-clinical studies. The type and contents of required clinical studies will vary according to available information and the properties of the original biologics. The following are examples of comparative clinical trials conducted with biosimilar products. Pharmacokinetic PK studies are conducted to compare PK parameters such as AUC and CMAX with biosimilar and original biological products. Pharmacodynamic PD studies 
are conducted using PD markers that reflect the therapeutic effect. Clinical efficacy studies are conducted using endpoints, reflecting the therapeutic effect on the patient, referring to the endpoint of phase 3 study of originator. This slide describes the indications and dosage and administration of biosimilars. When the efficacy and safety of the drug are comparable to those of the original product in the comparative efficacy study, the approval of indication A is possible. In addition, if the indications of the originator product are pharmacologically expected to be similar, and if there is no concern more than the originator product in the safety profile, the other indications can be added to the biosimilar, even if no clinical trials have been conducted for the indications. That is called extrapolation. All indications and dosage and administration of originator biologics should be obtained after the re-examination period has expired. In this diagram, indication B can be approved if extrapolation is appropriate. However, if the originator has a re-examination period for indication C and D and or the patent period from the time of first approval, the biosimilar cannot be approved for indication C and D until those periods are expired. In this case, Indications C and D for the bisimilar will be approved after 2024 or 2025, respectively. It is necessary to collect post-marketing information on the comparability of biosimilars that could not be sufficiently evaluated by the comparability evaluation at the development stage. Every medical product should be conducted, reporting adverse reactions the periodic reporting of safety information and monitoring of safety profiles of approved products. These activities are called routine pharmacovigilance practices. Biosimilars may require additional pharmacovigilance practices such as use results surveys, post-marketing database investigations, post-marketing clinical trials. These additional actions may be required if no clinical studies have been conducted in the proposed indications or dosage and administration, and there are concerns about safety profiles that differ from those of the approved indications or dosage and administration. This slide shows the links to a Japanese guideline and a Q&A on biosimilars.